what's up? Hey, so this video, I'm gonna go into how you can mess and, and optimize and change and flex and bend your funnel, your call funnel. So if you're someone who you own a business and you, you're marketing, you're trying to fill up a sales calendar, you sell stuff over Zoom or the phone, and you have to book into a calendar, you have a funnel, okay? You're driving traffic to some sort of lead capture. They might be going through some warm-up material and then they get to the calendar and then your sales process starts. I have noticed after consulting and working with a bunch of different businesses that business owners don't know there are mechanisms you can use to bend, flex, and change the funnel to either increase the lead friction, which would be how many hoops they have to jump through, how much qualification, how qualified and hot of a lead they are. But that also increases cost and decreases flow versus the other side, increasing flow, but that can sometimes mean decreasing the cost and also decreasing the quality. And how and when do you make these pivots and shifts in your business? Well, this is going to be a training exactly on that from A to Z, top to bottom. My name is Taylor, if you don't know me, we make these videos to document all of our best business practices that we're using when we consult with businesses. And then we just put them on here and we share it with you for free. So if you like the content, make sure you subscribe and I hope you enjoy the video. Hey, how's it going? So we're gonna go over basically some ways that you can create friction in your marketing and sales process, which friction just simply means uh, you're creating more hoops for the prospect for the lead to jump through which does increase its quality. However, when you do that, that also is going to increase the cost. I'm gonna go through some of these different ideas and sort of framework ideology behind it with some real life examples at the end. But when it comes to like, okay, how, how qualified of a lead am I trying to get? You're gonna to wanna to consider a few things. What we always advise with businesses is you want to first create lead flow. Like if you don't have leads coming in consistently all of the time, you just want to create that flow. And if you want to create flow, then you're going to want to make the friction low so that your cost is low, right? You want to be able to spend a hundred dollars and get 10 leads, right? Or 10 calls booked versus spending a hundred dollars and getting one call booked. After you start to monetize the lead flow, then you would optimize, which is throwing in the appropriate amount of friction. Friction in marketing, it's, it's gonna put less burden on the sales process because it's a more qualified lead, right? The, the more they have to jump through in the marketing, the less they have to be sold. But, so, so you should expect a higher conversion on the sales side. So if you have a sales team or you're doing the sales, you put more friction in the marketing so the quality of the lead's gone up. Your conversion should go up as well. And at the end of the day, the only thing you should care about is what is your cost to acquire a customer and what is the average cash collected at point of sale so that you can predictably grow because you want to have cash flow at point of sale. If you can have cash flow at point of sale or if you have huge lifetime value, big back end, you can have lost leader sort of client acquisition and that's fine. So low friction means cheap leads, but that also means lower conversions, right? They're less qualified, so you would expect you're not gonna close as many of them. High friction means the leads are more expensive, and I say leads, same as calls, but you should have higher conversion, okay? And like I said, you wanna optimize for net cash flow at point of sale, which is a low cost of acquisition. So what did it cost to make the sale in marketing and commissions versus how much cash did you collect at point of sale? Here's some different things to consider. If your calendar is limited, so let's say you're doing the sales calls or you have one or two sales guys, you wanna bring in as many sales as possible, but you've got limited time to do it. Well, you want to probably increase the friction then, so that way more of the, that time spent on the phone, because it is time, you're gonna want your conversion to be higher. So that means you'd wanna increase friction. If your calendar is more sparse, like you're still having a hard time, like you've got two or three sales guys, or like you could take a bunch of sales calls, but that's still not getting full, then you're gonna to wanna to decrease friction. You just wanna put those calls on the calendar. You wanna just get those leads and calls in front of you. The other thing along the same lines is if you have a really highly trained sales team that performs, so let's say you have sales guys that are really, really good, then you wanna increase the friction to protect their calendar, and protect their time. 
if you have green salespeople, right, they're newer and you're scaling out the team, then you might want to decrease the friction so that you can lower your call cost, right? They're going to have a learning curve, learning how to close regardless. So you might as well make their opportunities a little bit cheaper. Some actual ways to create friction in your marketing and sales funnel. Um, at the opt-in stage, you can just literally add more fields. So low friction would be email only, higher friction would be name and email, higher friction would be name, email, and phone number, and then name, email, phone number, and some additional information, right? That would be higher friction because the more fields that a person fills in, usually they're more likely to be looking for a solution. So their lead quality is a little bit higher versus if you just do email only, they might just be like, ah, I'm curious what this crap is, right? Or no, no fields to opt in. It's just a click to get the information that would be even lower, right? Then you've got lead capture on the platform versus your website. So what I mean by this is, let's say you're running uh, ads on Meta with Facebook and Instagram, you could do a Facebook lead form, which has the, the prospect, the lead filling out their information on the Facebook platform versus clicking going to your website and filling out their info there. If you keep them on the platform, that's lower friction. If you bring them over to your website, your ecosystem, that's higher friction. Then you've got your VSL, which is guys, just essentially like, what is that video collateral? What is that marketing collateral that quickly warms up your prospects? And so video sales letter is like that video package that warms up your leads to enter your sales process, to create product awareness, brand awareness, problem awareness, solution awareness. Okay. So you could do one that's less than five minutes, right? We have that one uh, set up with a mortgage loan company. You can have one that's under 10 minutes. Um, we have something like that set up with a marketing agency. You can have one that's under 20 minutes, like what we do with a fitness or coaching, or you can go under 60 minutes if it requires a little bit more education and trust. Um, you know, so it's like, but the more time, the longer it is, then the more friction you're creating. The next thing you could do is you could not allow them to book into the calendar so they can't become a call unless they watched a certain amount of that VSF. So like what we'll set up in uh, our live and free business, which is a business opportunity, we will, uh, they'll have an opt-in page. After the opt-in, they'll go to the watch page of the VSL and there's no buttons to click, just the video to watch. It They have to watch 14 minutes for them to even see that there's a next step, okay? And so you guys can, you can trigger like next stage to your funnel based on them spending time watching that video. And you can use uh, solutions like, um, here, I'll write it down, like plus this. And you can trigger that into Wistia. And then uh, that would basically enable, uh, if they watch a certain amount of time of that video, then you can allow a pop-up or a next step uh, to happen as well as adding a tag to your CRM so you know which leads watched the whole thing, which leads did it. The next thing you could do is you could add an application after the VSL before booking a call. So now it's like they've watched a video and instead of booking, now we have them fill out an application and we score the application. So for business opportunities, because they're low conversion offers, meaning network marketing, drop shipping, Amazon FBA, starting your own income store, starting your own agency, any, any um, business opportunity type of offers, those have low conversions. So you're typically going to want more friction in the marketing. You have to do some heavy lifting in the marketing. And so you want to have an application. So if you guys, I was going to show you over here, we'll embed our coach launch uh, application. So they have to do name, email, phone number. So we get that again, right? And we start asking them some questions. Why are you looking to possibly start your own business? You know, what would you be able to, so we kind of get them going through an experience of problem aware, solution aware. And then we also uh, make sure that they, do they have like, do they have income and a way to pay their bills? Meaning we don't want to help broke people because they can't pay for our program. Are you the decision maker? Is there someone else in the decision making process? Can you be this type of person? Yes or no. And you can see here, we can redirect them based on a score of the application. And we can be like, no, we can't help you. So we don't let them see the calendar or we redirect them to the calendar if they do score high. So that's another thing that you guys can do is using type form and scoring with an application. Instead of going straight to the calendar, that would be a form of friction, but it really increases 
the quality of those calls because now they're getting a little bit more positioned on price, a little bit more positioned on finances, a little bit more positioned on readiness. The next thing is in your funnel, you can make one of your sales calls a paid call. That would be a form of friction. So we had to do this with a marketing agency because their offer is 5K a month plus 5% of growth. So, you know, the, their average client is paying seven to 10 grand a month and the stickiness is around 11 to 12 months. So, I mean, we're talking about like an $85,000 lifetime value. So it, it, it require it's a big sale, it's a lot of money. So it requires more friction to get that yes. So what we did is in the funnel, we do high friction in terms of the language that we put in the ad. So that's another thing I could probably add to this whole process. Like the more direct you are with your language communication of like, hey, we can't help you if you do this. Like you need to be able to invest this amount of money. Like the more direct and less elusive you are in the actual content, the more friction you'll create as well. For them, um, we would do a two call close. So there's the call, the discovery call, as opposed to like trying to sell the 5K right out of that, we decided instead to price position the 5K, but then tell the prospect, but you know what? I don't think we should do that with you yet. Maybe what we should do first is just like an audit. It's 500 bucks. That way we can actually see what the real opportunities would be in your guys' e comm store. And if we find opportunities, then we'll be able to lay those out to you with a formal audit. Um, we'll be able to deliver that to you. And if you want, to pursue those opportunities with us, we can credit the 500 towards working with us. And if we don't find any opportunities, we'll just refund the 500. Like, dude, that's an irresistible offer. Like, why wouldn't we do that? And it's literally another sales call. It's just, we're making them pay for it. And so it helps consolidate some of the ad spend. It also increases friction. And because of that increased friction, the closing on the other side is very strong. Coming on that same vein, you can have a two call close where you triage first and then you do closing. So you could have everyone book into a 15 minute call and that's more of a qualifying call. Like, are they in need of the services that you have? Are they ready to buy those services that you have? Are they financially qualified to buy the services that you have? And are they able to make the decision to get the services that you have? If they do, then they're probably qualified. Now you can not pitch them, you just send them to the next call and that's when you would do the closing process, okay? So these are all forms of friction that you, that you can be testing, adding, removing based on the ecosystem of the business. So an example start. So this is where you guys could start. So you wanna get a lot of cheap leads and get them on the calendar. Your opt-in stage is just email. You can have a VSL that's under 10 minutes and it's just a link to book right away and it's a 30 minute call slot and you just get people on the phone. Right after you take 10 to 20 calls and you start making sales, you can kind of look at numbers, then you can add friction or not based on calendar availability, the call cost, acquisition cost, all that kind of stuff. That would be a place to start. A place to end could more so be like, all right, opt in with name, email, and phone number. That way you can have a sales development team contacting all the leads that don't book and push those leads down the funnel. You could then increase the VSL to 15 minutes and make them see 15 minutes before even seeing an application. You could create an 11 question application that financially qualifies more decision maker more time. Uh, like, are they ready to buy more score it, then book into the calendar. And then you could triage that call the day before and then do the closing call. So this is what we have set up with our business opportunity offer. It's very a high friction funnel. Hopefully this makes sense, but these are different ways you guys can add friction and test the funnel around adding and removing friction um, to optimize your guys' sales on the front end.